Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear an interview with a singer called Nick Parker, who plays in a band called Crispy with his sister Mel. For each question, choose the correct answer: A, B, or C. You now have forty-five seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. I'm talking to Nick Parker, the singer with the band called Crispy. Nick, your sister Mel plays guitar in the band too, doesn't she? Yeah, Mel's a year younger than me. We've been playing and singing together since we were eight, nine. Dad is a guitarist and took us to hear the great bands playing live. Mel and I put on shows at school, which was a lot of fun. Mum thought we were good, but she didn't want us to get too serious about our music because of the hard lives professional musicians have. When did you start writing music? I've been writing since I was ten, and later Mel started working with me. We didn't have the same influences. I liked rock music, and she loved world music, especially bands from Africa. But we found good ways of mixing the styles. Your band, Crispy, has two guys and two girls in it. How was it formed? Mel and I were playing in a concert at our college, and there were two students from music school in the audience. They came to see us after the show, and asked if we'd like to form a band with them. We weren't sure at first because we were much younger than them, but we agreed to try it out, and it was brilliant. Was the band an immediate success? Well, we spent the first year practicing and writing music. During that time, we all had studying to do. We played in local concerts, and the audiences enjoyed what we did. Then, during one holiday, we recorded two songs and sent them to a music company. They offered us a contract, but our parents said we had to finish college first. You've been together a few years now, and you're one of the top bands. What's that like? Hard work. We travel to concerts all round the world, and are never in one place for more than a few nights. The others are like an older brother and sister to me and Mel, which is good. They help us relax on our days off and make sure we eat well. They're strict about practicing too. Have you had any disappointments? Everything we've recorded has done well. Three singles have gone to number one, and our first album has sold over a million copies. Our second album was due out this winter, but I've been ill recently, so we've started recording late, which is a pity. But for the rest, everything's fine. Now listen again. I'm talking to Nick Parker. The singer with the band called Crispy. Nick, your sister Mel plays guitar in the band too, doesn't she? Yeah, Mel's a year younger than me. We've been playing and singing together since we were eight, nine. Dad is a guitarist and took us to hear the great bands playing live. Mel and I put on shows at school, which was a lot of fun. Mum thought we were good, but she didn't want us to get too serious about our music. Because of the hard lives professional musicians have. When did you start writing music? I've been writing since I was ten, and later Mel started working with me. We didn't have the same influences. I liked rock music, 
and she loved world music, especially bands from Africa. But we found good ways of mixing the styles. Your band, Crispy, has two guys and two girls in it. How was it formed? Mel and I were playing in a concert at our college, and there were two students from music school in the audience. They came to see us after the show and asked if we'd like to form a band with them. We weren't sure at first because we were much younger than them, but we agreed to try it out, and it was brilliant. Was the band an immediate success? Well, we spent the first year practicing and writing music. During that time, we all had studying to do. We played in local concerts, and the audiences enjoyed what we did. Then, during one holiday, we recorded two songs and sent them to a music company. They offered us a contract, but our parents said we had to finish college first. You've been together a few years now, and you're one of the top bands. What's that like? Hard work. We travel to concerts all round the world and are never in one place for more than a few nights. The others are like an older brother and sister to me and Mel, which is good. They help us relax on our days off and make sure we eat well. They're strict about practicing too. Have you had any disappointments? Everything we've recorded has done well. Three singles have gone to number one. And our first album has sold over a million copies. Our second album was due out this winter, but I've been ill recently, so we've started recording late, which is a pity. But for the rest, everything's fine. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three, questions fourteen to nineteen. You will hear a man called Ben from a young people's organisation telling a youth group about a course they can do on Saturdays. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have twenty seconds to look at part three. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hello, everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name's Ben, and I'd like to tell you about a course you can do on Saturday mornings. I'm from an organisation called Nature, and we run courses for young people like you to do during the weekends. Now we know that at school you learn a lot about things like science and maths, but this course is really about giving your youth group the chance to come and find out about wildlife. It's an area that tends to get forgotten. We usually take groups like yours to a wild place that's near their home. Sometimes we go to a beach or a lake, but we've planned for your group to go to a forest. That's the closest place for you and the easiest to get to. Now, we'd like you to come and do some activities with us. You spend six hours each week with us, and the course lasts for twelve weeks, depending on the weather. That might sound like a long time, but we think you'll be sorry when it's over. Taking part in our activities means you get to do all sorts of things that you wouldn't normally be allowed to do at home. That includes how to safely climb trees, cut wood, and build a fire. While you're with us, we'll also show you how to make things out of different materials. On the last course, everyone designed backpacks, which they were very pleased with. 
This time we thought we'd get you to design and make a birdhouse. When it's finished, you can take it home and show your family. We think you'll enjoy doing this. Now, any questions? Now listen again. Hello everyone. Let me introduce myself. My name's Ben and I'd like to tell you about a course you can do on Saturday mornings. I'm from an organisation called Nature and we run courses for young people like you to do during the weekends. Now, we know that at school you learn a lot about things like science and maths, but this course is really about giving your youth group the chance to come and find out about wildlife. It's an area that tends to get forgotten. We usually take groups like yours to a wild place that's near their home. Sometimes we go to a beach or a lake, but we've planned for your group to go to a forest. That's the closest place for you and the easiest to get to. Now, we'd like you to come and do some activities with us. You spend six hours each week with us and the course lasts for 12 weeks depending on the weather. That might sound like a long time, but we think you'll be sorry when it's over. Taking part in our activities means you get to do all sorts of things that you wouldn't normally be allowed to do at home. That includes how to safely climb trees, cut wood and build a fire. While you're with us, we'll also show you how to make things out of different materials. On the last course, everyone designed backpacks, which they were very pleased with. This time we thought we'd get you to design and make a birdhouse. When it's finished, you can take it home and show your family. We think you'll enjoy doing this. Now, any questions? That is the end of part three. Now turn to part 4, questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a boy called Thomas and a girl called Ruby talking about a poster for their school sports day. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, Choose the letter A for yes. If it is not correct, choose the letter B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part 4. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. So, Ruby, what about this poster for the school sports day? How shall we start? Hmm, well, Thomas, I think we should draw a rough copy on this paper first and then do a final copy when we've got everything right. Good idea. Well... Let's get a bigger piece of paper. That paper's too small. Hmm. I think last year's poster was 40 centimetres by 60 centimetres. That was a good size, so there's no reason to change it. And we'll make it black and white again. I think that looks best. But wouldn't it be a good idea to show that our new sports colours are purple and yellow? That's a good point. But think of the cost. We need to do at least 20 photocopies. Oh, I forgot about the money. Of course. So, what shall we put at the top of the poster? Do you think we should have our school name there? 
I'd prefer it in the centre, so that it's the first thing people notice. That's where the photograph should go, I think. And then we can put the date and the time underneath it. OK. Which picture are we going to use? Well, there are three here. This one of the football team isn't very good. And this one's too dark. I prefer this photo taken last week of the baseball game. It's a very popular new sport at our school. Fine. So, that just leaves how to write the words. Do you think we should use all capital letters? Let's see. If we put the school name and address here, they should be in capitals, but there isn't room for everything so big. But people need to see the date and time clearly. I know. Everybody knows the school address, so that can be tiny. OK, let's try it that way. I think it's going to be a really good poster. Now listen again. So, Ruby, what about this poster for the school sports day? How shall we start? Hmm, well, Thomas, I think we should draw a rough copy on this paper first and then do a final copy when we've got everything right. Good idea. Well, let's get a bigger piece of paper. That paper's too small. Hmm. I think last year's poster was 40 centimetres by 60 centimetres. That was a good size, so there's no reason to change it. And we'll make it black and white again. I think that looks best. But wouldn't it be a good idea to show that our new sports colours are purple and yellow? That's a good point, but think of the cost. We need to do at least 20 photocopies. Oh, I forgot about the money. Of course. So, what shall we put at the top of the poster? Do you think we should have our school name there? I'd prefer it in the centre, so that it's the first thing people notice. That's where the photograph should go, I think. And then we can put the date and the time underneath it. OK. Which picture are we going to use? Well, there are three here. This one of the football team isn't very good. And this one's too dark. I prefer this photo taken last week of the baseball game. It's a very popular new sport at our school. Fine. So, that just leaves how to write the words. Do you think we should use all capital letters? Let's see. If we put the school name and address here, they should be in capitals, but there isn't room for everything so big. But people need to see the date and time clearly. I know. Everybody knows the school address, so that can be tiny. OK. Let's try it that way. I think it's going to be a really good poster. That is the end of part four. You now have six minutes to check and copy your answers onto the answer sheet. That is the end of the test.